Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Word. In this module, I want to show you how you can do mail merge from Excel and use filtered data in Excel. So first of all, let's have a look at an Excel spreadsheet. So I've got two tabs, address and filtered. So this is a normal Excel spreadsheet with a filter applied and I'm going to use this data to do a mail merge in Word. So if I go back into Word for a second, so normally you would go mailings, select recipients, use an existing list, and it's in documents, and it's called data source. And address is the sheet tab I want, so OK. So that will bring in that data, and if I go edit recipient list, there's the Excel data there, the whole lot of it. Now you've got the option of filter in, filtering in Word, which I've done a video on already, but this is, uh, I want to show you how you can filter in Excel before you even get to this stage. So I'll just click OK to that. Add a, an, an address block, that'll do, OK. And preview that, and then you can go through the records and it just moves them all forward like so. So there's 15 altogether. So that's the first one. Now, the problem with this is, if I go back into Excel and say, let's put a filter on, and I've got a filter for leads, so now this is just showing leads. When I come back into Word, um, I'm still looking at all 15 records. So if I do F9, which normally would update fields, let's have a look what that does. So I've still got 15 records. If I go back into the data source, edit the data source and refresh, OK and then push it forward. I've still got 15 records, so that is not picking up the filter from Excel as such. Now, what I want to do now, if I get myself a different Word document, I want to show you what, I, what I've done in Excel. So I'm going to get the same list, mailings, use the same Excel file, but a different sheet on it. So data, use the filtered sheet, Okay, so now when I bring this in, so I'll do the address block, same address block, okay, let's have a preview of the address block. And I've only got 10 records and they're all leads. Now, if I save this document, just do Control S, so I'll save this as filtered, I'll overwrite the other one, save, yeah. Right, now if I close this document, so there's 10 records there and they're all leads, and then go back into Excel and go to the filtered tab and change this to something else like Bradford for example, there's only two records. When I come back and open that Word document, um, file open, so it was filtered. Yes, I do want to update the links and if I go back to the mailings tab on this one, I've only got two documents, so it's picked up the change in the filter. So this is a bit like an access database where you can create a query that's already filtered and then merge it into Word. But like I've already said, you do have this option in Word, but I just think it's um, a little bit quicker if you can filter in the source data and then do the merge. Obviously, you can still filter here if you wanted to pick this city field and equal to leads or whatever, but you'd have to do that every single time and sometimes you haven't got the time. So if I just close this file down, don't save it, and this one, don't save that, and get myself back into Excel so, to have a look at this filter. So what have I done? So there's my source data, that's my main data list, um, which I've got filtered, so I'll just remove that filter, select all. What I want to do is, let's change this to leads, so this is a filter for just leads off this list. What I'm using is a filter function and this drop down list. So this is data validation. So in data validation, all I've done is if I go to the data tab and data validation, what I've done is I've just typed that list of cities, but you can use a named range. If you've got a list somewhere, you can just use a named range and put it in there, equals cities or whatever. So that gives me the drop down list of my options. 
and then the filter function is looking at that A2 and doing a filter. So basically it's looking at the address sheet on cell A1 to H16, so that's the whole table. A1 to H16, the whole table. It's then looking at the column F1 to F16, so F1 to F16, the city column, and looking at this sheet filtered, filtered, and cell A2. So basically whatever goes in cell A2, as I've said, which is a drop-down list, you can change it and it will filter. And this is the source data for the mail merge. So I'll go back into Word and open up Filtered. Yes, I do want to update it. And then go to the Mailings tab and go forward. So there's only one record for Halifax. Now, if I change that again, if I go back into this and put a different, let's put leads back on. So there's a lot more in leads and then come back into Word. So this is still showing Halifax. So if I do the F9 key, we should update fields. And then just have a quick look, see what's happened here. Still showing just one. So it hasn't updated it. So if I do that again, and this time I'll close it down and reopen it, and then you can see the difference. All right, so I'll close that down. File close. Yes. And then file open. So you'd be opening this all the time. Yes, I do want to update the links. Go into the mailings tab. And I've got 10 leads it's from leads. So normally when you do a mail merging word, you have this main document that's linked to the data source saved that you open every, say you have to do it once a week or once a month, you open the main document and then you do the final step. It would always be asking you, do you want to update the source or the link from the source data? You would say yes. Then any new records or any deletions would be picked up. Then you finalize it by going finish. And then I always select this option you can filter it a little bit here from record if you wanted to, or I'm just going to go for all OK, and then there should be 10, 10 records for leads. And this, unless you need to save this for audit purposes, you don't really need to save this printout. You can just close it, don't save it, and you're back to this source file, which you would then save and close, and then ready for the next time you're going to do it where you might change the filter. Bradford say and then you can filter from there so it's just a different way of doing it it's not um, set in stone you can choose your, your own way you may even use a different data source an access table or you can use data sources in um, here so you can type a list itself and then you would have to use the filters within words because you wouldn't have any options because it is in word even though when you do create that it actually creates an access an access table um, but it puts it in um, the de your data source folder. And as, as I said earlier, you can do it from here as well, filter. But that's all I wanted to show you on this little example, how you can filter a data source in Excel prior to bringing it into a mail merge in Word in the same way that you can do with an access query. So hopefully that was of use to you. Thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.